here. Today is January 15th, 2019. And look what we got, folks. Well, Mr. Ed was out wrangling yesterday. Got a surprise coming in the mail. Yep. But today we're going to be doing an unveiling of, of our brand new honey wax separator. We're going to get Renee to bring it over to the honey hut and we'll unveil it over there. By the grace of God, by the end of a few minutes, well, maybe a few hours, we'll have this thing uncrated and in, in position. Let's wrangle and open up a box. you're dealing with any kind of uh, numbers of frames and, and my goal is, is to be able to start processing around 400, 600 gallons of honey here and you, you just have to be able to uh, have the equipment to accommodate that kind of volume and so we, we have to just think of a little bit larger scale and the, the problem is that the bee industry, uh, the manufacturer of bee equipment they cater to both hobbyists and commercial guys. But for people that have 200, maybe even 500 hives, people like us, we don't, we don't have any um, means of, of, we can't use the hobby stuff and we can't use the commercial stuff because we don't have enough hives to, to use the commercial stuff. And the hobby stuff, it's, it would just take forever for us to do it. So you have to, come up with your own um, ideas of, of processing the honey and the wax that will um, enable you to be able to uh, enable me to produce this uh, the honey uh, and then separate the wax on a, on a larger scale and so this is just the system that, that I devised. So let me I'm gonna give you kind of like a rundown of, of the problems that I've run into and this may I know it's not going to help all of you, but there's going to be a, a few of you people out there. I know Phil up in Minnesota, he's, he's in my shoes right now, and uh, he's, he's looking for ideas. So maybe uh, folks like him, that this, this will give you an idea of my thinking on the process, and it may be able to help you. So let me go ahead, I'm going to show you the, the equipment that I'm using right now, and what I was using, and what this piece of machinery right here is uh, hopefully is going to be able to accomplish for me. Begin with, when we bring our, our um, deeps in here, our honey supers in here to, uh, to, to be uncapped, um, this, is, this is our uncapping machine. And this is a, a Dakota Gunnis uncapper, and it's, and it's a chain uncapper. And there's, basically there's two types of an uncapping machines. You either have a knife uncapper um, or, or a chain uncapper. And the knife on cappers, what they are is just a blade. It's usually got uh, heated, uh, hot water goes through the elements and the blades are heated up and they slice the cappings off of off the frames. Um, this type of, of uh, on capper, it's a, it's a chain on capper. And what happens is when, when you look inside the, 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 the guts of the machine right here, I'm going to grab it. In fact, let me, let me, I'll, I'm going to focus the camera in and let you see what this looks like. So this is what the, uh, the uncapper is, is all about. It's working off a principle of these little chains, it's about an inch and a half long chain, that are attached to these bars right here. And these bars are, are then uh, attached to the motors. They drop. These bars are, are twirling around. And you have uh, one on the top. Uh, with, with two bars of, of, of chains on them, and then one on the bottom um, is, is three, it's not two, it's three lines of chains on them. And what happens as our frame is passing through on this conveyor, it's going to pass under this row of chains, and it's going to pass above this row of chains. And so what happens is that the cappings on the face of the uh, frames is going to be drug off. Instead of being sliced off as with a knife, the chain on capper drags the cappings off. And one of the advantages, and I thought it was probably the best advantage of this type of, of machine, is that 
because your honey frames are never exactly flat, ideally we'd like them to be that, um, there's a lot of times there's misses in the, in the frame. So this, by the chain dragging across the face or the bottom of the frame, it will travel up and down over the uh, unevenness of the frame and it will draw off all the cappings. So it's very efficient in its um, way of uncapping the, the, the frames of honey. And that is why I prefer this type of machine as opposed to a, uh, a knife uncapper. All right, so now we'll go look at the extractor. Now we're over at the extractor. And almost every beekeeper knows what extractors are and they come in a, a, a variety of sizes. Um, from two frame all the way up to 120 frame from uh, a radial extractor like this uh, or a tangential extractor or you know, now they even have uh, horizontal uh, radial extractors and those are for like those really big commercial uh, uh, guys and gals uh, but this one is just a radial extractor and it's no different than uh, a four frame nine frame 18 frame 20 frame except this has just got 48 frames. So I'm gonna grab the camera, show you inside of this one and uh, see some of the points of, of what this particular extractor that I like about. So here's the inside of our extractor. And there's nothing uh, different other than the size of it uh, as, as any radial extractor. What I really like about this one is that the way the frames are held inside of the extractor. On the top part of it, there's a notched groove that your frame will sit into and then on the bottom there's a channel that will support the frame as well as a hole to accept the ear of it. So as you place your frame inside of the extractor you drop the ear inside of the hole right there and it automatically because it's at a, an angle it sits back onto your, your frame will sit back onto the outside rim. And I know, I know when I, in, in, in my other extractors, you always have problems with the frames wanting to flop over and move around. But in this one, because there's a channel on the bottom and it's held up at the top, these frames stay in there really nice. On the bottom of the extractor, the slope is down and in to the bottom, as opposed to most extractors, the bottom is sloped from the center to the outside. So honey tends to on, on most extractors run from the center to the outside but on this one the honey runs from the outside to the inside and in the bottom down there there's a, uh, a hole where and there's a pump on the bottom and that pump will then pump out all of our, our honey and, and, and wax mixture and that then goes into the um, what I was using this year which was a clarifying tank and let me show you what that was so here's our clarifying tank and what I had done last season, and I know those of you had seen the, uh, the video, the processing uh, of the honey, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll sh show that link in this uh, video, at the end of this video as well. But what we were doing, as, as the honey is coming out of our extractor right here, being pumped from the pump through this tube into our clarifying tank, the mixture is a lot of wax with the honey. One of the, one of the some people may say a disadvantage of a, a chain on capper as opposed to a knife on capper is the amount of wax that it um, produces and leaves inside the honey mixture. Um, I don't I don't have a problem with that because it's it's there is a lot, but if you let it settle long enough, the, all the wax will, will rise to the top. And that was the thinking um, when I when I purchased the, the clarifying tank. Now this is a um, it's got a, a heating element in it. Uh, you you fill your your tank right here, the, in, the exterior tank with water and there's a heating element so it should, it, it helps to make the, by heating the honey, it helps to make it flow better. And it does, it works, but for, for me, the process, I think this is a um, 18 or 20 gallon tank, I'm not, I don't remember exactly. Um, and what happens is that when each time I would run my extractor, it would fill this tank up and there'd still be honey in here that needs to pump out. And the process of the clarified to furry to work, they have these, these batteries inside of it that um, as the honey is, is poured into here and the level of the honey right, rises, the wax is on top of the honey and it's theoretically, it, it catches inside of these baffles. 
And then the honey travels underneath the baffles into the rear of the, of the tank where it's then pumped into our drums. And it worked, it, it did work, but the process was, was just too slow, uh, at least for me, because it only takes maybe 15 minutes to spin your honey, but for this to, to really work, you, you've got to wait an hour. And I'm just, I'm just not into the, uh, that waiting part. I'm very impatient. I want to get the job done. So what I, what I, my way of thinking is that what I'm going to be doing this year is I'm going to um, not use the clarifier this time. And from my extractor, I'm just going to be dumping my honey and wax mixture into my 55, 30-gallon uh, drums. Um, and, and then I'll allow that uh, honey wax mixture to settle, just like I was doing it when I, when I was putting it in uh, the five and seven gallon buckets, I let it settle, let all the cappings rise up to the top, skim them off, and then uh, filter that honey, and then um, go ahead and start bottling it. But what I'm gonna do now, we're just gonna use a bigger scale, is I'm going to fill the drums up, let the, let the uh, wax filter through the uh, honey, up to the surface, let it sit three days, it's done. And all of our drums have spigots on the bottom of it. So I don't even have to filter the honey anymore. I can bleed the honey, the already filtered honey, off the bottom of the drums. And once the level of the wax drops to a certain point where some of the finer wax starts coming through the uh, spigot, I'll stop it. And that's where this little girl is gonna come into play. What we'll do at that point is we'll, we'll grab the, uh, the drums and we have a, um, a really nice uh, drum lifter um, that, over there and it, it can lift up uh, 800 pounds. And, and some of those, uh, when you get the 55 gallons are close to 300, uh, 600 pounds. So it'll lift up our drums of honey and it'll tilt it. And so we'll, we lift our drums of honey to uh, drain the honey out of it into our bottler and then once that level drops, then we'll take that bucket and then we're going to take all the, the, the honey and cappings and then we'll throw it into our uh, honey wax separator and it will then spin that honey wax mixture separating the honey and the wax. And that's really what the, the process is. I, don't, I, I bypass a clarifier, I allow natural filtration and um, then, then when the, the honey and the wax mixture is starting to come out, then I'll throw it through here. So that's basically the process that I'll be using. So there's only one thing left to do. Let's open up this bad girl and see what she looks like, huh? <laughs> I think I got the uh, necessary equipment to do that, you know, a hammer and a pry bar. And I think I'm ready to go. I want to, uh, I noticed this, I want to tell you, um, the shipping weight of this thing is 623 pounds. So this, this ain't no lightweight little piece of machine right here. So uh, let's go ahead and open up this girl and see what she looks like, huh? Look at that, oh my gosh. That thing is awesome looking. It's got a heating element right there. And then that obviously is the, the top of it. And it will then sit inside of this part. Oh my gosh, that thing is nice. Very nice. Uh, I'm looking, I'm just even looking at the way they created this thing. They they did such a great job on creating this thing. It's really nicely done. And so on the bottom, look at this on the bottom. Here's our motor, our drive motor right down there. And I don't even really know what the inside is going to look like. I know there's knives in there, some kind of uh, bars in there to separate the wax. Um, but let's find out what this all looks like. I'm gonna go oh my gosh, it looks pretty scary in there. Oh, this is show you. Just get off these... Uh, Wing nuts right here, we'll lift this top. And, uh, I'll show you what is on the inside of this honey wax separator. Yeah, this is what it looks like on the inside. The uh, 
the whole drum spins. That's what that big motor is down the bottom. It spins this drum, and as that drum is spinning, those knives keep hitting that wax, it goes back and forth, back and forth, breaking it up. And then you can see the sides are perforated, and the wax stays inside of the uh, drum right here, and the honey will then come to the outside. And uh, as it comes to the outside, drains down to the bottom, We'll collect until it goes to the valve right here and, and that valve, look at that, it's a stainless steel gate valve, a ball bearing gate gap valve. And you open it up and honey flows out, the wax, the honey flows out, the wax stays in there. All right, next thing to do is to get this thing off the crate and onto the floor. So I got it all done, at least uncrated done. So, uh... I guess really the only thing I, I was thinking I might have to do, I might have to put some um, warning labels um, on here um, for the dirt roots to tell him not to stick his hand in here. But I, I don't even think his hand, those big old watermelon hands, they'd even get in here, so I probably wouldn't have to do that. So that's all I got for you this one. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. I'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed, I'm out here until the next video. Okay, so this is a lot, it's a lot. So Judy Hart says, happy birthday to your mother. The Hamburglar GT, happy belated birthday mom. Pan 60, the Pan Man, happy birthday to mom. Oh my goodness. Wait, that's nothing. That's just the start of them. Chica411 says, February 9th is my husband's birthday. So belated happy birthday to your mother. Thank you. Yadong says, happy birthday, Mr. Ed's mom. From Germany. From Germany. From Germany. <clears throat> what part of Germany? I don't know. It just says from Germany. Mr. Goose Pit. Nice work, Mr. Ed. Happy birthday to Mom. God bless her always. Thank you, thank you. Ditch Doc, 129. Happy birthday to your mom. Oh, my goodness. I'm White, 94. God bless her. Happy birthday. Thank you. I did have a nice birthday. <laughs> Matt Ruff. Happy birthday, Mr. Ed's mom with lots of hearts. Oh, boy, look at them. <laughs> oh, here's one that, this is my buddy. He's done changed his name. Now he calls himself Bruce's Bees, but everybody used to call him Oki Rob. And he says, happy birthday to your mom. <laughs> and then he, said he, then he goes on to say, so the trick to catching more swarms is never remove them and just count them each year. Oki, that's my little secret, okay? Don't, don't let anybody else know that. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, such happy birthdays. Oh, the, 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 this is nothing. We, 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 I got to keep on scrolling. Janice Stevens, happy birthday to your mom. Hope she had a wonderful day. I did. Wonderful day, week. Joe Denton, happy birthday, mom. Thank you, Joe. E.G. Paris, 18. Many, many happy returns from Paris to your lovely mom, Mr. Ed. And God bless you both. Merci beaucoup. Ooh. <laughs> Kyle Steele, 94 years young? Now that's amazing. Mm hmm. Uh oh, here's, here's this one's trouble. Louis McNeely. You better tell mom happy birthday from us here in the hills. God's peace and get mom a nice cake too. <laughs> we did that. <laughs> your mom oh this is from Joyce Joseph give your mom a belated but heartfelt happy birthday wish from us she is responsible for bringing a fine human being you into the world I got five brothers and sisters too <laughs> and managing to raise her son correctly God bless you both thank you Jean Nuna what no video of mother's celebration <laughs> that's my sister oh <laughs> 
Leanne Kennedy, happy belated birthday to your dear and lovable mother. Thank you, thank you. How long does this go on? There, there's a hundred and over 150 comments, oh, and there's no. probably there's probably 130 happy birthday wishes. We'll never do all of these, Jeff. I know. <laughs> I'd have to thank everybody because I know we're not going to be able to to get to all of that in one time. Yeah, but it's just show you how many people are yes. sending you their their happy birthday wishes. This birthday that you celebrated this year, was it as exciting as your 80th birthday? <laughs> no. What did you do on your 80th birthday? <laughs> on my 80th birthday, I went skydiving. <laughs> so you jumped out of a perfectly good airplane? A perfectly good airplane. Perfectly good jump. <laughs> <laughs> That's mom.